What's up guys? My name is Emil and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the W201 Restoration Project. If you're just joining us now, welcome to the channel. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with. What I've got behind me is a 1993 Mercedes W201, so a 190E that started its life as a 2.6 liter straight six uh, motor vehicle. Now, um, if you missed episode one, you can click up here to, uh, to see the full details of the project. Basically, I'm rebuilding this car for my dad for his 60th birthday, even though he's now you know, 63 years old. Um, and we're putting a diesel engine in it and rebuilding everything from scratch, top to bottom. So front suspension, rear suspension, drivetrain, engine, everything we can get our hands on to basically make this car uh, about as good as new. Close enough, anyways. Now, uh, up until now, uh, we started off with a 602 uh, motor that we're gonna put in here. Uh, it was running a little rough, we opened it up. We had some issues with camshaft wear, so, so I kind of shelved that engine on the side because I had an OM606 uh, sitting in my garage from a W210 that we took apart a couple of years ago. So we decided to go on and, uh, and use that engine instead. A lot more power, uh, a lot more modern. Uh, so it should have been a good fit. In the last episode, we finished up the front suspension. So in this episode, we're actually going to deal with the back. Before I jump into it, all right, um, we made a mistake in the previous episode that was uh, thankfully pointed out by one of the viewers. And um, re I really want to thank you for the comment. Uh, I didn't know this, so hopefully this will help uh, other folks as well while you're doing your uh, rebuild. So uh, before we jump in the back suspension, let's take a very quick look at what the problem was with the front suspension related to that episode. And then we're gonna um, look at the back. So here, I'm just gonna show you very quickly what we've done. So now we actually have to take the control arm off and, and fix this. So here's the problem. The bow joint, this is the new one that we pressed in, has, I hope you can see it, let's just move the light here. Has this little mark on it. Now, I did not pay attention to this. Uh, all I did is align the actual sh uh, shaft with the bolt that fits in the uh, knuckle here, but the manual very clearly says that this mark has to be aligned with the center of the control arm, right there. So actually this bow joint is 90 degrees off the center line. So now we have to unfortunately press this out, turn it 90 degrees and press it back in. Shouldn't be a big deal, this was fairly straightforward. I just, uh, I don't really wanna ruin the bow joint as it is, but um, I'm doing the springs now, so it makes no sense to put everything together and then have to take everything apart just so I can do this. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this and uh, fix it. And actually, unfortunately, both sides, it's a little bit darker here, but both sides are wrong. So this one's a little bit less so, but it still needs a good 30 degrees off to go to the left. So we're gonna go ahead and do this now before we start closing everything up, but then this should uh, set us up pretty good for finishing the rest of the suspension. So let's go get that done. So you can see the the ellipse. So this is lined up with the mark on the bow joint. So you want this to be lined up with this center of the control arm. So I didn't know this, this is very good to know. So definitely don't get this wrong. Now that we have fixed the front, we've got the springs it, the whole front suspension is basically uh, done and ready to go. So in today's episode, we're gonna take the rear subframe off. We're gonna clean all of the rust we can get our hands on, basically uh, refurbish everything with, with new bushings, control arms, drive shots, everything we can get our hands on, put it back up, and, and that's where we're gonna stop today. In the next episode, which is, uh, we've already got it shot, I'm just working on finishing it right now, we're actually gonna try and figure out how to put the OM606 motor in the car. Um, spoiler alert, it fits, all right? So we're going to just uh, very quickly talk about how it is that this engine fits in this vehicle. Honestly, I personally couldn't find any good uh, information about, you know, what are the issues with fitting a bigger engine, uh, you know, a more modern um, diesel engine in the vehicle. So I was, I was pretty eager to get that uh, episode shot. I have the content, I'm gonna put it up pretty quickly. Then following that, the next episode is gonna deal with finishing all of the little issues that are left over. There's a lot of it. So, you know, anything from the drive shaft, the handbrake, uh, you know, the, the steering, the steering mechanism, all that sort of stuff. And then in the final, final episode, we're actually gonna deal with running this motor, okay? 
So as of today, I'm having uh, some issues dealing with the mobilizer. Uh, if you saw the previous episode, I talked about how we're going to actually run this motor in this car. A couple of different ways. Uh, I personally wanted to go with the cheapest possible way, which was keep the stock uh, computer cables, all that sort of stuff and just delete the mobilizer so that I can run the computer. The problem is that the emulator that I got so far is uh, proving a little bit hard to, to get working. I'm working with the manufacturer there, so we'll figure that out. If I cannot get that sorted out, I'm gonna have to pull the pump and actually put a mechanical pump. I was trying to avoid that. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it is actually the better option from managing the motor point of view. The third alternative was to have a standalone computer, manage the electronic pump, I haven't given up on that yet. Um, so if, if I decide to scrap the immobilizer delete issue, then the question is gonna be whether I wanna spend, you know, $500 on a mechanical pump, or I want to spend, you know, maybe a thousand dollars on the uh, engine management system and run the electronic pump. I, I'm not really sure which option I'm gonna go with. Um, so, so definitely check that out. Um, and um, if you see, if you, if you like what you see, Click uh, the thumbs up. And if you want to see more about how this engine is going to fit, how it's going to end up running, click subscribe so you don't miss any of the content. All right, that's it for now. Let's jump in the actual work. Let's get that rear su uh, subframe out, cleaned up, and put back in the car. All right, let's go.
that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more, click subscribe. Um, I really appreciate the comments you guys have left uh, on, on the other videos. I had a viewer comment about uh, one of the bow joints in the front, which I had installed the wrong way. So, you know, this is very, very helpful for me and, and for everybody else that's watching. So please continue to do that. If you do have any questions, please let me know. And um, in the next episode, we're going to put the 606 inside the W201. So that's going to be very, very interesting. I'm certainly very excited about it because I've been having a lot of questions about the fitment um, of this setup. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.